Have you ever found yourself avoiding situations, people, or even thoughts just because it's causing you uncomfortable or anxious? Why do we do this? How can we stop? Stick around to find hey out. Hey there, thanks for stopping by and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to dive into a super important topic. Are you avoiding life? Before I could further dive into the video, if you have not already done, please do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified on my weekly content. Without any further ado, let's dive in. Avoidance behavior are common, but did you know they are deeply rooted in our brain's wiring? Let's dive into the fascinating world of neuroscience to understand why we avoid and how it affects our mental health. First, let's talk about amygdala. I've spoken about this in many of my videos previously, and just a quick reminder of it. There's a tiny almond-shaped structure in your brain. Uh, it acts like an alarm system. It detects threads, triggers, fear responses. When amygdala senses danger, it signals us to avoid whatever causing the threat. Next up, the free frontal cortex, for short, PFC. It's responsible for uh, important decision-making and rational thinking. It helps regulate the amygdala response. However, if a free frontal cortex isn't functioning well, we struggle to manage our fears and end up in avoiding most of the situations more frequently. And finally, the hippocampus, our memory center. It helps us to distinguish between the safe and dangerous situation based on our past experiences. When it doesn't work properly, we might generalize our fears and avoid more things than necessary. But it's not just about the brain structures. It's also about our neurotransmitter, the chemical messenger, the conductor, which communicates between our brain and our feeling, the emotions and our body's behavioral actions. For example, low levels of serotonin is linked to increased anxiety and avoidance behavior. On the other hand, dopamine, the feel-good uh, chemical, is responsible for our motivation. If it's out of balance, a drive to face challenges can plummet. Did you know chronic stress can elevate our cortisol levels and uh, increase our avoidance behavior? High cortisol levels affects our brain regions and modern stress responses and making it harder for us to confront the fears. Okay, enough of the brain science. Let's talk about the solution. How we can overcome avoidance behavior? Is that the question? I'm going to give you a few tools that's practically around you in the form of therapy and self-help. The first up is the cognitive behavioral therapy. Studies have shown that cognitive behavioral therapy, especially the exposure therapy, can reduce significantly the avoidance behavior and uh, help people to face the challenges with more confidence and self-worth. According to meta-analysis by Offman and Smits, um, CBT is highly effective in treating the anxiety disorder. Mindfulness-based interventions, uh, especially the mindfulness-based uh, stress reduction and acceptance and commitment therapy, also uh, act as a powerful tool. And I do use it in my practice. It's very, very effective to people to overcome the anxiety, improve their self-esteem and self-worth, and face their practical life with more confidence and grace. So mindfulness-based uh, stress reduction helps you to stay present and reduce the urge to avoid distressing thoughts. Research from Journal of Consulting and Clinical Psychology indicates mindfulness therapy reduces symptoms of anxiety and depression. And therapy combined with medication is going to be more effective in people with chronic uh, avoidance behavior, um, especially uh, SSRIs can help manage uh, severe avoidance behaviors by adjusting their serotonin levels. But remember, medication should be used under professional guidance. Beyond therapy and medication, lifestyle changes can make a huge difference. Regular exercise reduces anxiety and improves mood, which can decrease avoidance behavior. There are many studies out there that have already been proven that exercise actually improves the anxiety and depression level, improves the quality of life in people with uh, chronic disease and people without chronic disease. So I don't need to talk about more about it so you're aware of it. And don't forget about the sleep. Good sleep hygiene is very crucial for emotional regulation and cognitive function, helping you to face challenges straight on in your life. But here's something most of us don't know. Breath work can also play a significant role in overcoming the avoidance behavior. As I mentioned in my previous video, 
we breed 23,000 rats per day and we have uh, more than 60,000 thoughts per day. And the thoughts swing between the positive and the negative thoughts. And more than negative thoughts, more our breathing rate increases. And that leads to a cycle of uh, excessive carbon dioxide expulsion and imbalance in the chemistry inside the body. And that triggers our emotional feeling of anger, frustration, and how we feel ourselves our self-worth and how we actually appreciate others and include others in our life as a connection in a positive way. So when we, when I say we are ang having a higher anger and uh, lower self-esteem, so our sympathetic is active and our parasympathetic is inactive, which is a calm and digest nervous system. So we want our body to be activated with calmness to ensure that we are able to bring out our full potential out to face challenges around us because we need to apply our rational thinking when you're frustrated or angry we cannot use our rational thinking so deep breathing exercises have been shown to activate the parasympathetic nervous system which calms the mind and reduces the amygdala hyperactivity a study published in the journal frontiers in psychology as well, has found that controlled breathing techniques significantly reduce the anxiety and depression and improve emotional regulation. Now, let's try a quick breathing exercise. I'm going to teach you the box breathing, which most of us are familiar with, but let's apply in this video and in this minute and feel the calmness inside us. Are you ready? Yes, sit back in your chair or on the floor if you're more comfortable so that you feel more grounded. And we are going to do a four, 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 four cycle. So that's why it's called box breathing. Are you ready? So we are going to now breathe in for four counts, holding for four counts and breathing out for four counts and holding for four counts. And then again, repeating the cycle for another two times. Yeah, so in total, we're going to do it three times. So let's begin. So sit comfortably. Breathe in. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe out. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Repeat the cycle. Breathe in. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe out. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Another cycle again. Breathe in. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe out. One, two, three, four. Hold again. One, two, three, four. So there you have it. Thanks for participating in this box breathing. So research has shown that practices like this can lower your cortisol levels and enhances your free frontal cortex function, helping you to confront and manage your fears more effectively. So if you find yourself avoiding life, remember, it's just not you. It is your brain trying to protect you. But with the right strategies, you can train your brain to face the fears head on and live a fuller and happier life. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and a like and subscribe to my channel for more science-backed mental health tips. And drop a comment in the comments box. I love to hear your comments. Let me put a question. What avoidant behavior are you going to tackle first? Answer this question in the comment box. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, stay healthy, stay curious. Signing off, Devi Sundar.